this presentation will talk about mites, particularly another group of mites, the astigmatid mites. This lecture will aim to familiarize the scientific and common names of the two main mites, one scaly leg mite and one ear mite. For each mite that we are going to discuss, we should be able to learn their habitat, their transmission, pathology, clinical signs, diagnosis, treatment, and their control. Mites are grouped according to the presence or the absence of the stigmata and also the allocation of the stigma or the stigmata. So when we say stigmata, these are also known as the respiratory openings where the mites breathe. For the astigmatid mites, they are characterized by a lack of the stigmata or the respiratory openings so that respiration is through the integument or the skin. The astigmatid mites include the mange mites. So when we say mange, that is any kind of various persistent contagious skin diseases marked especially by eczematous inflammation and loss of hair affecting domestic animals or sometimes humans and caused by parasitic mites. The mange mites include the sarcoptes, natuedres, autodectes, and nemidocoptes. So we'll start with the sarcoptes scabae. Sarcoptes scabae is also known as the scabies mite. It is a parasitic mite that infects or infests dogs, pigs, man, sheep, goat, cattle, and horses. But the dogs and pigs are considered to be of major veterinary significance. Different subspecies of mites or Sarcoptes cabe infest each host species. But some temporary transfer may occur. So for example, in dogs, for example, we have the Sarcoptes cabe var canis, and for pigs, we have uh, Sarcoptes cabevar suis. Temporary transfer may also occur. So, for example, the, the mites that uh, the Sarcoptes uh, cabevar canis in dogs may uh, also infest humans, as well as the Sarcoptes cabevar suis can also infest humans. So the entire life cycle is spent on the host. So the Sarcoptes cabe is considered to be a burrowing mite and it burrows extensively on the epidermis. Transmission is via direct contact or via fomites. So this is a diagram of the Sarcoptes cabe under the microscope. The adult mites are about 0.2 to 0.6 millimeter long and roughly circular in shape. Their surface is covered with small spines, small triangular spines, and they have four pairs of short legs. For a comparison between the male and the female, the females are almost twice as large as the males. This is another diagram of the Sarcoptes cabe showing the triangular scales, triangular scales and spines on the dorsum and these are considered to be distinctive features of the parasite. This is a scanning electron micrograph of the burrowing mite Sarcoptes cabe. So the mange in dogs is also known as the Sarcoptic mange or the canine scabies, and this is caused by the Sarcoptes cabe var canis. This is a type of infestation that is considered to be highly contagious in dogs and it is found worldwide. So this diagram shows the life cycle of the Sarcoptes cabe. In this uh, inset, we have here the epidermis. As you can see here, the Sarcoptes mites, particularly the adult, will burrow into the epidermis. So it is considered to be a burrowing mite. The Sarcoptes mites lives in burrows, which they dug into the keratin layer and the superficial layer of the epidermis. The female, lays two to four eggs daily. Then the eggs will hatch and produce the six-legged larval stages that are substantially smaller than the adults. The larva seeks to exit its birth tunnel by digging one of its own, 
the larva molds to create an actively moving eight-legged protonym. This life cycle stage lasts for about two to three days. The next molting produces a tritonym. And that particular uh, uh, nymphal stage, you know, the tritonym, later become the adult mite. So we have here the male and the female Sarcoptes cabe. In experimental conditions on a rabbit, the entire life cycle of the each mite from egg to adult lasted about 10 days. So according to literature, a typical life cycle occurs or lasts for two to three weeks. This is another diagram of the life cycle of the Sarcoptes cabe showing the uh, the burrowing mite, not the adult female, that burrows into the keratin layer of the skin and lays its eggs there. Then it, the eggs will later develop into a larva. It will mold into the nymphal stages, to have the diotonymph you know, and the protonymph, and it will become the adult. The clinical signs of the Sarcoptes cabe may develop anytime between 10 days to 8 weeks after contact with an infected animal. Intense pruritus is characteristic and probably due to hypersensitivity to mite products. So when we say pruritus, that is the severe itching. Primary lesions consist of papillocrustus eruptions with thick yellow crust, excoriation, erythema, and alopecia. Secondary bacterial and yeast infections may also develop. Typically, lesions start on the ventral abdomen, chest, ears, elbows, and hocks, and if untreated, become generalized. Dogs with chronic generalized disease develop seborrhea. So when we say seborrhea, that is an abnormal increase in the secretion of the sebum. There is also hyperkeratosis, severe thickening of the skin fold, uh, skin with fold formation and crust buildup. Peripheral lymphadenopathy, Lymphadenopathy is the enlargement of the lymph nodes and emaciation. Asymptomatic carriers is also common for the sarcoptes or the scabies mite. So when you say asymptomatic carriers, these are animals that are um, apparently healthy, but they carry the uh, parasite in them. This is a diagram of the sarcoptic mange in dogs. So the elbow the forelegs, and the chest now of a dog with sarcoptic mange. We also have here a condition in dogs known as the scabies incognito. So the scabies incognito is common in well-groomed well dogs, but the dogs are said to be pruritic. The mites are hard to find due to lack of crust and scales that are manifested by the uh, by the dog. So when we say incognito, that is uh, the, a term that is uh, derived from a Latin word, incognitos, meaning unknown or in disguise. So the scabies incognito can result from inappropriate use of steroids that may modify the clinical presentation of scabies and when it mimics other dermatoses. For swine, the uh, sarcoptic mange can also cause economic losses. It can particularly result to poor growth, weight, and weight gain, and reduced feed conversion efficiency. It can also result to destruction of pens and equipment due to severe itching by the pigs. Diagnosis of the sarcoptic scabe or the scabies mite is based on the History of severe pruritus of sudden onset, possible exposure and involvement of other animals, including humans. Making a definitive diagnosis is sometimes difficult because of negative skin scrapings. Concentration and flotation of several scrapings may enhance the chances of finding the mites, eggs, or feces. Several extensive superficial scrapings should be done of the ears, the elbow, and the hocks, particularly the non-excoriated areas. A centrifugation fecal flotation using sugar solution may reveal mites or eggs. And we also have the 
commercially available ELISA. So the specific and sensitive ELISA test is used to detect the specific antibodies to the parasite. So because mites can be difficult to detect if sercop test uh, is on the differential diagnosis list but no mites are found, a therapeutic trial would be warranted. This diagram shows the scabies mite and the mite eggs from the skin scrapings. This photo shows the early form of canine scabies caused by the sarcop test scabie. We also have here another diagram of the chronic form of canine scabies showing extensive crusting and hyperkeratosis. Systemic treatments of scabies are based on the administration of macrocyclic lactones, some of which are FDA approved for use in this purpose. Among them, we have selamectin is given as spot-on formulation at 6 mg per kilogram. Another is the imidacloprid plus the moxidectin, so the brand name is Advantage Multi which may be used on dogs as, as young as seven weeks of age. It is also available as a spot-on formulation. Other indecticides that can be used are milbimycin oxim and ivermectin, which are not registered for treatment of sarcoptic mange in dogs, have been reported to be effective depending on the dosage and route of administration. So these uh, drugs, the ivermectin, and the melbimycin oxim are off-label systemic. So when we say off-label, these are pharmaceutical drugs that are indicated for or that are used for an unapproved indication or in unapproved age group, dosage or route of administration. So the ivermectin and the melbimycin oxim is considered to be uh, not registered for use as a treatment no, for this particular parasite. We also have a topical medication for the treatment of the sarcoptic mange. So we have here uh, the, the use of topical. So an important consideration when using topical treatment is that the hair should be clipped, now the crust and the dirt removed by soaking with an antiseboric shampoo and an acaricidal dip applied. So we can use, for example, the lime sulfur, which is uh, considered to be highly effective and safe for use in young animals. Several dips, seven days apart, are recommended. We also have the amitraz. Amitraz is an effective scabicide, although it is not approved for this use. For its concentration, the concentration sh that should be applied is 0.025% solution at one or two weeks intervals for two to six weeks. For pigs, the specific etiological agent of the mange or the sarcoptic mange is Sarcoptes cabevar suis. And for its life cycle, it also requires about 15 days or 14 to 21 days to complete the life cycle. So the for the transmission, transmission to other hosts occurs via the direct contact, and all stages occur in the host epidermis. This is the etiological agent of the sarcoptic mange in pigs, Sarcoptes cabe suis, in the microscope. So we have here the biological cycle of the Sarcoptes cabe. The mite spreads directly from pig to pig, either by close skin contact or contact with recently contaminated surfaces. The bore helps to maintain, so we have here the bore, it helps to maintain infection in the herd because he is constantly in direct contact with the breeding females and it remains a chronic carrier. If pigs are housed in groups, there is increased opportunity for spread. The mite dies out quickly away from pig under most farm conditions in less than five days. This is an important factor in the control. If a herd is free from a mange, it is one of the easiest of diseases to keep out because it can only be introduced by carrier pigs. 
However, once it is introduced, it tends to become permanently endemic unless control measures are taken. The sarcoptic mange in swine has two major presentations. So the first presentation is the allergic or the erythematous presentation characterized by papules and reddened skin areas. Another is the chronic or the hyperkeratotic presentation. This is a severe allergic mange in sow that is due to sarcoptes cabae. This is an active sarcoptic mange infection in the ear of a pig. The skin lesions due to sarcoptic mange, particularly the papillary dermatitis, can also be scored according to its severity, particularly during slaughter. So for the grade 1, this is the distribution of the popular dermatitis. So it is a, a mild, mild form showing the delineation of the different, uh, the location of the, of, the, of the popular dermatitis. For the grade 2, it is much severe compared to grade 1 and the grade 3 is the most severe form. This image shows a hypersensitive reaction to mange mites in a growing pig. We also have here an oral hematoma in a growing or a young growing pig, a common sequel to mange infestation and head shaking. This is another clinical manifestation of sarcoptic mange in pigs. Treatment of sarcoptic mange in swine herd includes the ivermectin injection at 300 microgram per kilogram subcutaneously 14 days apart. We also have the infeed ivermectin medication for confinement reared pigs and of course uh, we should not forget to treat traumatic lesions in pyoderma. For the prevention of sarcoptic mange in swine bird, it is important to isolate new pigs and take skin scrapings from any suspect lesions. If in doubt, treat 10 days apart with ivermectin, doramectin, or related compounds. Sows and boars are considered to be the permanent reservoirs for infection. Hence, it is important to treat the sow 7 days prior to farrowing to prevent the sow infecting her piglets. Also, Treat the sows every six months. Another breeder that is an important uh, reservoir of uh, mange is the boars. So we need to treat the boars regularly every three months. We can also consider culling the pigs with chronic lesions that will not resolve with treatment. So because treatment in this case may be too expensive. The mite will only live away from pigs for about five days. Wash down pens that have had infected pigs in them with a wash that will kill mites. Then leave pens pig-free for five days. These are the chronic lesions of sarcoptic mange in pigs. So the sarcoptic scabby is also um, can also be transmitted to humans, and that is is known as the human scabies. So the primary mode of transmission is person-to-person. -person. Occasionally, transmission may occur via fomite. So that is via uh, direct contact. So there seems to be rather high host specificity between subspecies of Sarcoptes cabei. So interspecies transmission and zoonosis is usually minimal and transient. These are the clinical manifestations of Sarcoptes cabei in humans. This is another diagram showing the sarcoptic cabe infestation in humans. So humans can catch sarcoptic mange from dogs, but the mites involved cannot complete their life cycle in the human skin. So as a result, the issue can cause some skin irritation in humans, but it does not last long. Another mange mite that we are going to study is the Notoedres cati or the the causative agent of the feline scabies or the cat mange. This is considered to be a rare, highly contagious disease of cats and kittens. It can opportunistically infest other animals, including people. 
So the mite and the life cycle is similar to that of the Sarcoptes cabe. Pruritus in this type of infestation is considered to be severe. Notoedris cati infestation can cause a development of crust and alopecia, particularly on the ears, the head, and the neck, and it can also become generalized. The mites are easily found on skin scrapings. This diagram shows the notoedris cati under the microscope. We also have here an adult female specimen of notoedris cati from a cat. For its taxonomy, again, Notoedris cati belongs to the Astigmata group under the family Cercoptidae. So it is also known as the cat mange mite. So these are the um, photographs, the microscopic um, photographs of the Notoedris cati. We also have here a ventral view of a female Notoedris cati. This is a scanning electron micrograph of an adult notoedris cati mite among hair and skin debris. Treatment consists of both topical and systemic therapies. Non-approved but effective and safe treatments include selamectin, spot-on, moxidectin, spot-on formulation. So imidacloprid, moxidectin are available in spot-on formulation. And we also have the ivermectin subcutaneously and uh, lime sulfur dips at seven days interval. These are the clinical manifestations of notoetric mange in cats. This is a feral wild cat before and after treatment from notoetric mange. Another mite that we are going to study is the Nemedocoptes mutans or also known as the scaly leg mite of birds. The Nemedocoptes mutants infect both wild birds and domestic poultry. Transmission is by direct contact and all life stages occur on the birds. These mites live in areas of the unfeathered skin. So this is also a burrowing mite. It burrows into the epidermis of the legs, causing scales to thicken and lift up. It can burrow, particularly into the legs, the feet, the beaks, and it becomes thickened and deformed. So we have here a diagram of the causative agent, you know, the Nemidocoptes mutants, under the microscope. So these are uh, microscopic mites, you know, which live under the scales of the legs and feet of the bird. They are pale gray, eight-legged mites with flat, round bodies. In terms of their life cycle, they have a life cycle of 10 to 14 days. These mites will spend their entire lives on the host, burrowing tunnels underneath the skin, reproducing, defecating, and feeding on the connective tissue. This is another diagram of the main body features of the genus Nemidocoptes. So when we are going to compare that with the Sarcoptes, the, they have a similar body feature, but the dorsal surface has only faint and irregular scales, no spines, and the anus is considered to be dorsal. This diagram shows the female Nemedocoptes mutants under the microscope. So this is the clinical manifestation of the scaly leg mite infestation in birds. So uh, this particular parasite can cause the development of scaly raised encrusted scales on the legs of the chickens and other poultry that have scales on their legs and their feet. Chronic infestation may cause, may cause the keratin to ooze out from the underneath the scales, leaving a crusty layer on the legs and the feet. The scaly leg mite infestation can be characterized by the development of the thickened skin and ray scales and swollen feet and exfoliating crusts. So for the treatment, Treatment of the individual bird is required. Daily application of an oil-based product such as petroleum jelly, paraffin, mineral oil will soften the crust. Then the affected areas can be washed with mild soap to loosen and remove the crust. Treatment should continue for at least two weeks or until the legs return to normal appearance. Insecticide treatment is an option but must be administered 
on the advice of the veterinarian. So we can also treat this with topical acaricides, also with oral or IM ivermectin at 0.2 mg per kilogram or 50% topical. A scaly leg mite can cause scaly leg in chickens and scaly face in the butcher riggers. Another group that we are going to study is the Autodectes cynotes, also known as the ear mites of cats and dogs. The ear mite, Autodectes cynotes, is a surface mite that lives on cats, dogs, rabbits, and parrots. It is usually found in the ear canal, but it can also live on the skin surface. Ear mites are highly contagious and animals become infested by direct contact with another infested animal. The mite is barely visible to the naked eye and may be seen as a white speck moving against a dark background. So this is a diagram of the adult male Autodectes cynotes. And again, this is surface mite and in the adult stage it has four pairs of uh, long legs with short pretarsi. These are the illustrations of the Autodectes cynotes now under the microscope. So again, for its taxonomy, it is under the group Astigmata of the family Sauroptidae. We also have here an adult female Autodectes cynotes. On closer look, the Autodectes cynotes is also characterized by a short, unjointed pedicel. Autodectes cynotes live and reproduce in the external ear canal, hence they are a common cause of otitis externa, especially in cats but also in dogs. For the transmission, transmission is via direct contact when mites wander to the ear pinna. The clinical signs include head shaking, continual ear scratching, and ear droop. Pruritus is considered to be variable but may be severe. There can also be a dark brown cerumen accumulation in the ear and suppurative otitis externa with possible perforation of the tympanic membrane may be seen in severe cases. Self-trauma can be induced by scratching and hematoma from head shaking. Mites can be observed on swabs of the ear canal, the swab ear with cotton swab and placed under warm light. It can also be visualized with an otoscope. Affected and in-contact animals should receive appropriate parasiticide treatment in the ears. Systemic therapies have been approved and include topically applied selamectin and moxidectin. And we also have the direct application to the external ear canal of cats using approved ivermectin and milbimycin oxim formulation are also effective. As a general rule, ear cleansing with an appropriate seruminolytic agent is indicated with any therapy. This is a clinical manifestation of autodectus cynotes, infestation showing alopecia and wounds on the skin or on around the ear of a cat suffering from severe otitis. You also have here the development of the dark brown ceruminous exudate in the pina of a Persian cat that can be uh, induced by otitis externa due to ear mite, not a cynotis.